Hey everyone and welcome back to Remember This Tech. In today's episode I'm going to be doing an unboxing of a B650 motherboard. This is my first B650 motherboard right here. AM5 socket motherboard. Supports DDR5 and a whole bunch of other features. But I got this on a um, Amazon Black Friday deal and I had to grab it because I wanted to do some future tests with uh, AM5 socket and chips and I figured I had good luck with um, you know Gigabyte in the past so why not try this one. If you're interested in this I will put the link for this motherboard in the description below along with other links to an entry level AM5 gaming setup. In case you're interested check it out. So let's go over a few of these um, features right off the back of the motherboard. This is the uh, Gigabyte B650 Eagle AX full ATX motherboard. This is supports AMD Ryzen series processors, AMD socket AM5, which is AMD's relatively new socket platform. And the new AM5 CPUs don't have the pins on the CPUs, but rather a BGA ball grid array. And the pins are in the motherboard socket. Kind of like Intel's been doing for years and years. This is based on the AMD B650 chipset. Features one PCI Express 4.0 X16 slot. As for display interfaces, there's one HDMI display port on the motherboard. Dual channel DDR5 RAM four DIMM slots, three PCI Express 3.0 uh, X1 slots. And there are, are four SATA 3 ports. There are three M.2 for SSD. So I don't know why they labeled it like that. I'm assuming it's just four SSD SATA 3 slots. So I'll look at the, we'll look at the board and we'll just go over that and make sure supports RAID 0, 1, and 10, 8 channel HD audio, gigabit LAN, 802.1 AX wireless USB. There's two USB 3.2 gen, two type A USB 3.2 gen, and one USB type C, and two USB 3.2 gen 1 capability for 12 more USB. 2.0 slot so that must be through a header for full ATX like I said and the dimensions are 305 by 244 one of the key things that it supports here is that it has an enlarged enlarged MOSFET heatsink and M2 thermal guard it also has 12 plus 2 plus 2 phases for the digital VRM and then it has um, Wi-Fi and antennas built into the board and PCI Express 5.0 M.2 slot. Yeah, it says it has a PCI Express 5.0 M.2 slot. And that's the top slot, so yeah. Interesting, right? So without further ado, let's crack this open. We'll get a feel of what's in the box and we'll look at that board in it, all its glory. Now well, here's the front of the box and let's kind of crack it open. All right. So standard cardboard packaging, that's it. Before we dig into this and take it out of the anti-static bag, let's see what else is in the box. Um, we have the standard thing that they put in here for all of their motherboards. Uh, write a review and get a reward a friend. We'll give it a gift card. So they throw that in here. Multilingual installation guide. How to put your RAM in, how to put your CPU in, graphics card. So it even goes as far as putting your you know power supply in. These weird paddle antennas. Interesting. And only two SATA cables. And of course, 
you know, it's your M.2 slot uh, screw. So don't lose this. This is basically on the motherboards now to support and supply this screw. Don't lose it. There is some serious weight to this board. And there you are, in all of its glory, sitting on a crinkly anti-static bag on the work table here. All right, so first glance, it's got an interesting kind of color scheme. You've got your M.2 slot that they claimed was um, 5.0. So be interesting to test some speeds. I don't have a 5.0 NVMe, but I'm glad they're future looking. Here's your socket AM5 uh, protector and you know, standard kind of looking AMD brackets, four slots for your dims, USB 3.0 header. Got a lot of fan headers on here. This one here and then there's three at the top and one is definitely for the CPU. What I like here is they label the dim banks A1, A2, B1, B2, and it tells you, so you can't really mess it up. Looks like there's RGB headers here as well for LEDs and such, and that's up top here. There's two of those that I can see first off of hand. This board features a unique, easy uh, slot removal thing right here and that it's not down below, like it'll be up here. My um, Asus board for my Intel socket has like one that goes even further that comes out here and it comes over to the side so you can just press the button and release it. This is a novel idea, but the Asus one does it better. But for this price point, I mean, uh, can't go wrong with that. Uh, PCI Express, what I don't like is that it's not reinforced, it's only plastic. Let's take this, um, M.2 heatsink off here, and we've got um, thermal pad tape, and it indeed does say Gen 5 on here for the M.2 slot. So, I can't wait to test it out. Can't wait to test it out. The other two M.2 slots don't have any, you know, heatsink protection. What they do have, though, is these rather cheap um, way to uh, put this in the socket without having to screw it in. So they don't provide screws for these, but they also put these plastic tabs to secure the M.2 on the board without needing a screw. So as long as they don't break or brittle over time, it's a good way around that. These VRM, the VRM heat sinks are massive. Not the biggest I've seen in my life, but they're huge and uh, they're heavy, heavy duty. So you can see that there's gonna be some serious heat dissipation from there. You have one eight pin power here and your ATX 24 pin here and USB 3.2 header over there. USB-C I already pointed out. Now let's look, take a look at the IO on right here. They like that they have a display port. Sometimes you don't get that. Um, you also have HDMI. Why, why do they have a combo PS2 port mouse? I don't know, ask them, who knows? Okay, you've got USB, four of those here. USB-C, I love it when they put that on the board. Um, you have two USB 3.2 ports and two more USB and a gigabit NIC. Now, I wish you could get a 2.5 gig NIC on here. I mean, that's becoming kind of standard, but you know, for the price point, I guess it can live with it, right? And some people love to use the Wi-Fi, and this is Wi-Fi 6. You got that going for it, right? 6E. And then you've got your standard audio out and mic. So this motherboard supports up to DDR5, 7200 megahertz. And it supposedly with the BIOS update will support AMD Ryzen 8000 series CPUs. So out of the box, it, it states that it does support 7000. So 
depending on what BIOS rev you get that ship with your board, you may or may not need to update the BIOS to support your 8000 series CPU. But at least from the website, I see that it does have support for those 8000 CPUs. Now, like I said, I, I got this on a sale from Black Friday, Amazon. So right now it's currently listed around 159. And I still think that's a good deal for an AM5 board with this many features. Gen 5 M2 slot, USB-C, Wi-Fi. I listed it only had a one gig NIC, but you know, if you really, really wanted to, you know, for 20 bucks, you could throw in a 2.5 gig. So look for this motherboard and upcoming content coming up soon. I'll be doing some builds with it. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss it. So is this board a buy at $159? I do think it's a buy. I really got a great deal on the Black Friday sale. So if you can get it for a $159 or less, any less than that, it's a good deal, especially for all the features that it offers. And it'll get your foot in the door for the AM5 socket chipset platform. And that's where you know AMD's you know headed from here on out. AM4 still has support. But, you know, eventually they're going to have to phase it out. Thanks for coming along with me on this unboxing uh, motherboard review. My first B650 motherboard for the AM5 socket. And thanks for watching. Remember this tech.